okay so today we will talk about ring oscillator a very simplistic oscillator design using not gates n o t not gates or inverters so a uh, ring oscillator is made up of an odd number of not gates and the number must be greater than 1 so this is the minimal design with three not gates or inverters if you notice the output of the last inverter is tied to the input of the first inverter and if we measure the output here at v out we should see for an ideal scenario a square wave or rather a rectangular wave output now the question is how do you calculate number 1 the frequency and number 2 how does this oscillate so we we'll let's take the second part first is how does it oscillate before we get any further let's understand a few things number 1 in these gates the output goes from low too high but it does take a finite amount of time uh, which is called the delay or it goes from high to low again it takes a finite amount of time and that's again called the delay so let's simplify our number of variables to understand this easily let's assume that number 1 these two delays are same they are all ideal inverters so the delay for each one of these inverters is also same and the third one is the delay from going from low to high at this point where the input let's say from goes from low to high and that is the point where the switching occurs or when the output goes from high to low which is the point at which it is considered low both of these delays are same so low to high time taken or high to low time taken is exactly the same for all of these inverters and we will call it propagation delay tpd is the notification so now let's see how this works the output that is coming out of this is fed to the input now assume the output goes from low to high when that happens it takes a finite amount of time for this inverter to register that the output has gone high which is the propagation delay tpd after it has recognized that the input has gone high the output of this inverter 1 will go low which means again it will take a finite amount of time and the output has gone from high to low will be registered by the second inverter after a finite amount of time which is again tpd so there is a finite amount of delay and as we have said let's assume all of them are having the same operational parameter so even this is same as tpd so once the output of this inverter 1 goes low the input of inverter 2 has now been recognized to go as low for all this to happen so there has been already a delay of two propagation delays one for this output to go from low to high second for this output to go from high to low third again if the input has gone low this has to go high which means there is a third propagation delay assuming the characteristics of this this and this are same so now the propagation delay is three times when that happens this has finally so this was output goes from low to high 
the output input is high here so input is output is low here input is low here so output is high here input is high here so now this has to go again low when it goes low again this cycle keeps repeating and we will get an output like this so that's the first thing as to how it oscillates next is what is the frequency of oscillation so as we saw for one cycle for output to go from low to high and back to low it takes three propagation delays assuming ideal conditions once again for output to go back from low to high so if three this took three propagation delays this should also take three propagation delays a total of six propagation delays now having calculated that from here to here it takes six propagation delays so the time period is 6 t propagation delay therefore the frequency f is inverse of time period which is 1 divided by 6 times the propagation delay that's what the frequency is you might as ask a question as to where this is used uh, one of the simplest uses of this is to generate a pseudo random number which i generally do for my very small iot circuits now how does it generate see we have so far assumed that the parameters are ideal which is not the general case so even though i calculate the frequency as six propagation delays because of manufacturing differences there will be differences in the actual calculation number 2 between one cycle to another cycle because of jitters the time period will keep varying therefore the moment it goes from low to high if you start a counter and then end it when it goes from high to low that counter will keep reading a random value every cycle so that's a very good way to generate pseudo random numbers very cheaply i have read that you know this same thing is used in phase lock loops voltage control oscillators that have phase lock loop i have never tried that so it's up to you to look up to it hope you like this video you understood how ring oscillators work and where you can use it thank you uh, if you like this video please subscribe uh, like the video and put in your comments what else you want to see thank you bye bye